here for. The Sony A7C. And this thing's awesome. Here it is. Picked this up about a month and a half to two months ago before I went on my summer trip, which I made a video if you want to check it out in the cards up there. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with this camera. I wanted to get this camera in particular because I wanted to make the jump to full frame, but at the same time, I'm really, really happy with how small these APCS sensor cameras are like the A6400 I'm filming on now. So this to me seemed like the right pick. So is this camera worth getting now that it's been out for a year? And there's a lot of options out there. Well, we're gonna take a look at it and I'll let you know what I think. So first we're gonna talk about the body of the camera cause that's kind of a subject that a lot of people talk about with this. That is, why would you get this over the a7 III? They are basically the same camera. They have the same sensor, same processor, all that whatnot, like functionality of the camera and image quality is essentially the same but the body is your difference because you have features on this that are more appealing to video where the a7 III has features that are more appealing to photography. The most notable for this is the fact that this has the addition of the articulating screen so that you can view yourself to help you frame your shot as well as helping with low and high angles and even vertical video just being able to frame your shot much better for that sort of thing. But now the a7 III does have features that has been removed from this like the additional card slot the extra customizable buttons and spinners for adjusting settings and having the bigger e EVF on the top of the camera. But with all that, that doesn't really bother me that much because I'm coming from the crop sensor bodies that they make that don't have that many customizable buttons to begin with and all that those little bells and whistles. So for me, this actually isn't a big deal because I'm pretty much staying the same as far as what the camera can do. They have relocated the record button to the top of the camera though, which you can use as a customizable button if you choose. So you do have that. Another thing they've added to this body that is really cool, it does have gyro data inside of it so that you can record without the stabilizing turned on and use a third party program after the fact to stabilize your footage. It's kind of like the same idea as how GoPros and Insta360s work were for the stabilizing where it's using the information to adjust for your movements. So it's kind of interesting that they've added that to this camera, which once again is more of a video feature. So. So I'm gonna go test out the gyro data here. And uh, one of the things I was reading is that you need to set your shutter speed a bit higher because the, um, the, the stabilizing causes like some weird jittering, I guess, with the with motion blur. So I'm on one 200th of a second. And then the other thing you have to do is turn off the stabilization in the camera because apparently that makes some weird things happen. So I got that off already. So let's see, boom, stabilized. How's it look? Let's go film some stuff. The other the other thing you'll want to do too is using a wide angle because there is a crop, so wider the better as far as getting more in frame. Hmm. Normally there's a really cool skyline here. I want to film it. Oh well. Okay, one second here. Editor Jake working on this video here. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't tested this stuff out until making this video. I just, it wasn't something that crossed my mind. But man, I'm glad I did. This is actually impressively good. Like, it's not perfect by any means, but when you're doing handheld stuff, similar to what I'm doing right now, taking out those little micro jitters from your walking and stuff like that, it works extremely well for that. So this is something I definitely got to keep in mind. I'm gonna have to test it more because you can do it with the IBIS still on in the camera. Um, so I want to see how well it does work or doesn't work compared to having the IBIS turned off. So yeah, thumbs up Sony, good job. So another thing you're gonna get with this body is you get the updated autofocus that Sony has in their newer cameras, the 
eye auto tracking and uh, even bird tracking, I think, and animal autofocus. Where the a7 III doesn't have the updated autofocus, it still has a good autofocus, but this you're gonna get the, the state of the art, what Sony has to offer, so that's really cool to see. So making the jump to full frame though for photos, you like I, I know the camera doesn't really make the photo, but <laughs> these images look clean on this thing. At least for me, like I don't have the extensive knowledge of high-end cameras and stuff like that. Like this is the nicest camera I've ever used. But I gotta say, the, the photos, they look really good on this. Here's a few samples. Yeah, I know, they look really good. I am really impressed. Like I know it was going to be good because this is the a7 III, but I wasn't expecting it to be that much of a difference, like pixel keeping, so to speak, right? So yeah, really, really happy with that. All right, so who is this camera for and is it still worth getting? I think this camera is a video focused camera. I think it's great for content creating, primarily because you can do the vlog style where you have it pointed towards you, but you can also do vertical shooting really easily with the flip out screen. So those features alone are worth it for doing content creation. The photo quality is amazing still. So for photography, it is still gonna be a great camera. But overall, I think this is a content creator camera. That's who Sony designed this for. The price point and the compact size reflects that. They made something small and affordable for people to get into something like YouTube or doing TikTok or whatever you wanna use it for and be able to do everything you need to do. But is this camera still worth getting because it's been out for about a year now and there's a lot of options out there for cameras that can do what this can do or just sticking to a crop sensor body and spending, you know, five to a thousand less to essentially do the same thing, just not in a full frame format. And I think if you want to get into full frame and once again, you are a video focused person, this camera is great. This is easily the best camera, I think, for the price point if you want to do video work. All right, that's my look at the A7C. It's a great compact camera for content creation. And uh, I think if you end up picking one up, you'll really like it. Let me know in the comments below if you actually have one already and how do you like it. Maybe there's some stuff that I didn't cover that you think is really good. So let me know down below. And uh, if you guys made it this far in the video and enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss another video. But yeah, all right, that's it. I gotta keep editing. So much, so much time editing. Actually, I like editing. All right, see ya.